Our previous channel's first video was titled, Let Go of Wanting, Let Life Flow In. While it received some criticism, it garnered much more praise and was hailed as enlightening by people. Many approached the concept with the mindset of, I will just believe and it will happen, right? If there is doubt within yourself, if you harbor doubts about yourself, then it becomes a problem. The more we fear something, the more we increase the likelihood of experiencing that feared event. I have no money, I'm not happy with my job. How can you expect me not to feel doubt, fear, and anger? I have no loved ones, no one in my life. I can't even communicate with the people I like. And here you are talking about positivity, letting go, telling me to stop worrying, doubting myself, and leaving insecurity behind. I acknowledge these as needs, and indeed they are important needs. But the first rule of the law of attraction becomes significant here. The state of neediness you feel towards anything, and the energy of dependency it creates within you, means that the vibrations you resonate with are exactly at this level. By focusing on what you don't have and complaining about it, you're only amplifying that energy of lack, and you can't embody the energy of having and attract that reality into your life. The universe sees the negative energy you emit, the low vibration energy, and reflects the same back to you. When you think about it, the concept seems simple, yet at the same time quite confusing. It's like a vicious cycle then, one might say, and naturally asks how to break free from it. This whole thing, this concept, needs to be seen as a mind game. It's about how you trick your mind, in quotation marks, meaning what you convince yourself of and what you believe in. By the way, let's not forget, whatever we believe in, we are decorating our surroundings with the outcomes of that belief. It might turn into a chicken and egg situation somewhere. So, is it because we emit the energy that will attract what we want into our lives, that this energy comes back to us? Or do we elevate ourselves into that mode to emit the energy we want to come back? Believe me, the order doesn't matter at all. If our lives are changing in a positive way and contributing to our transformation, then we are open to both. The reason for making this video is both to do some brain exercises on this topic and to share what we've learned with our valued friends, our channel's followers. Step by step, I want to share how we can apply and integrate these concepts into our daily lives. I want to share how I did it, what I did right in my achievements. When I had fears, when I doubted, what did I do? How did I deal with them? How did I transform my mental structure and perception of the world? What did I think? What did I do? By sharing these, I hope to help others as much as possible. It brings me incredible joy to be able to contribute even a little bit to bringing your dreams, goals, and desires into your lives. We keep saying, let go of doubt, don't listen to your fears. We say, don't think negative, focus on the positive. But sometimes negative events, energies, challenges, and difficulties of life enter our lives, and we seem to have no power to stop them. What does it mean not to think negatively? You get angry, you feel like you can't enjoy life, you get upset. How can a person refrain from thinking about these things while in this emotional state? We talk about reprogramming our subconscious. We try to do this through affirmations, meditations, listening to subliminal videos. But still, when life throws a challenge at us, we freeze. We feel like we're back at square one. 
We've all been through these paths, or some of us are still at the beginning. We should realize that we're all playing the same game. The difference between those who succeed, those who have achieved abundance, consciousness, and others, is not that they have obtained these without facing any challenges in life. What sets them apart is how they perceive and react to what they encounter. Over time, they learn to be proactive rather than reactive. They learn not to let negative changes and obstacles undermine the inner power they have built within themselves by giving unconscious and sudden reactions. They don't allow their inner energy to be disrupted. Getting to this level of consciousness also requires constantly feeding your mind with materials that will bring you there and gradually climbing these stairs over time. Instead of giving the immediate reaction that comes from within you to a behavior or words from the other person that could demoralize you or disturb you, giving a response that can put the conversation into a dialogue form where you deserve to be rather than what you think they deserve, will allow you to maintain those inner dynamics we talked about. They can anger you, or rather, many things that would anger an average person can come your way, especially if you are someone involved in the business world. In your natural state as a human, you react to this event with your innate behavior. In many situations, and for many people, this reactive state extends far beyond an instant event, spreading over a long period of time. How many people have had their hearts broken, felt upset, and carried that sadness over an entire day, week, or even weeks? Some of us can even carry the weight of that heartbreak for months, years. It can happen over a tiny incident, and old friends can stay estranged for years. This even means, contrary to what may be visible, that the interaction continues. It means that the reaction shown never ends, and perhaps may never end. You continue to carry that burden on your shoulders. The difference between reacting and responding comes into play here. Reaction is an instinctual behavior that comes with being human and is fueled by the primitive aspects of the ego. It operates under the directive of the ego. Responding, on the other hand, is a choice. It's a deliberate act of using not only your emotions, but also your intellect, and being aware of which energy level your response serves. If a response is to be given, I clearly define it myself. I am fully aware of the responsibility of the response I will give and I do not jeopardize my holistic being, both internally and externally, with it. The ability to respond appropriately is a skill that belongs to you. It is consciously rejecting being under the influence of the ego. Even against someone exhibiting behavior that displeases you, you can still preserve your inner love and integrity. Even if someone yells at you, by understanding that you don't deserve it and recognizing that this behavior is not about you but about their ego and knowing that you have a superiority that does not derive from ego a superiority of consciousness you develop a response to the situation you begin to understand that you are merely witnessing it realizing that it's an interesting and perhaps worthwhile experience to have in your life. Another challenge arises in my life and I respond to it calmly. This is the response I choose. An event occurs and my dreams shatter. Someone comes and does something and I move further away from achieving the outcome I hoped for. How can I choose to respond in the way you suggest? I am disappointed, feeling down, saddened, and angry. That's the problem right there. Reacting isn't the issue. 
It's a natural human response. The first thing we need to do is understand and accept that. Reacting is a human behavior. But in light of what I said at the beginning of the video, when we notice the reflexive reaction that initially comes from within us in the face of the negative situation we encounter, we need to realize how to amplify a certain energy and take a stance that actually serves us, which is to preserve our mood and inner integrity. Not succumbing to the primitive impulse that comes in the first instant and acting with this awareness is a true symbol of our transformation. We should also minimize the distance between these two states of mind as much as possible. Understanding and internalizing this took some time. It used to take me weeks to get over something I experienced. Even if I were in the same environment as that person, I didn't want to talk. Of course, the sadness would come back and affect me again. I realized that there was something I needed to work on, and it was mostly harming me. I began to understand that I could determine how events affected me and the intensity of their impact on me. Initially, the weeks I mentioned turned into one week, then into one or two days, and finally into a period of no more than one or two hours. As I said, this requires practice because when one lets their guard down, they can easily revert back. If we don't complete a transformation, it's easy to revert to where we started. There's a certain threshold. Once you surpass it, you take a moment and realize that you're okay now. Those annoying situations are no longer bothersome. They can't affect you or your life. It's a bit like learning a language. You may struggle up to a point, but then suddenly you find yourself understanding the other person and being able to engage in dialogue. Perhaps after a journey of self-awareness for three months, six months, or even a year, your entire life can change. Imagine facing challenging situations in the future and realizing that they no longer affect your happiness as they once did. The negative attitude can't imprison you, and as a result, you've already cut off the path to even more negative outcomes that the negative attitude would bring. Imagine that this is achievable, possible, and not nonsense. Regardless of whatever obstacles you may encounter, you can maintain your positive state and, despite the apparent obstacle, still achieve what you desire in the end. I say this as someone who has personally traversed these paths. How do we do it then? The first step is to be aware of the reaction you're displaying. Is anger rising within you? No problem. Secondly, find a trigger that will reset your thought pattern. Prepare a thought pattern that will bring you back to a positive mood and use it when necessary. It could be a comedic character, a memorable meme, or a fun moment or dialogue with a loved one. Let it be something that will lift you out of that bad mood and bring you into a positive state. When you realize you're angry, that initial moment, recall that triggering instance and instantly transform yourself. Shock your internal system, that old lingering instinct. Trick your brain along with your mind and you'll be able to gather your energy. Find that thing and use it. Sometimes you see a friend with a broken heart, sad, or even crying. Instead of saying things that will increase their sadness at that moment, you make a small joke and you witness smiles forming on their face. The place we want to reach is similar to this. One, awareness. Be aware of the vibration you possess. Two, prepare a triggering thought pattern. After applying this triggering factor that will bring positive vibrations to mind. Three, 
be grateful. Thanks to this template that cuts through negative feelings like a knife, you also transform the vibration emitted by your current state of being. As I said, as you practice in your daily life, this behavior starts to become almost automatic. You place your hand on your heart and remember the values you have in your life that make life valuable to you. I am grateful for what I have. I am grateful for experiencing life, for breathing, and I am grateful for this challenge, this person, this event. It cannot change that. Thanks to my family, the beautiful people in my life, my friends, and for being able to witness the sunrise, I am grateful. Being able to access clean water, taste delicious food, see my favorite clothes in my closet, just being alive is reason enough. Thank you. I thank the universe for the beautiful energies it sends into my life. Thanks be to God for the blessings he has bestowed upon me. You cannot be angry and grateful at the same time. As a result, your vibrations begin to transform and you rise to a position emitting higher vibrational energy. As a positive high vibration individual, you open up space for energies in your life in this direction. In the fourth step, we refocus on our energy. We direct our focus towards the energy and vibration we want to possess and feel. What feelings do we want to cultivate within ourselves and attract into our lives? What positive vibrations do we choose to embrace? We focus on what we want life to make us feel and experience, not just what we have just experienced. Do you feel rejected? Where do you derive this feeling of rejection from? You choose to see the situation this way. This rejection is actually a form of protection that God has deemed appropriate for you. I choose to believe that God and the universal energies have something much better prepared for me, and I choose to feel this in my heart. I choose to feel perfect. I choose to feel blessed among the sacred sources. You're in the midst of an exam, facing a problem that popped up unexpectedly. The real challenging part is that you don't even know the solution. You feel stuck. I choose to know that every difficulty is actually a disguised blessing for me. Although this mountain on my path may seem too high, the Almighty is actually presenting me with an opportunity for learning and growth. As I progress on the path of life, I choose to perceive every obstacle as a stepping stone. How do you choose to feel? What are you focusing on? Because whatever you focus on becomes the center of your life. Energies flow there and show you results in line with that focus. You attract these outcomes into your life accordingly. And finally, number five, letting go letting go of desires. As we always say, it's best to return to whatever the daily tasks are. If you're going to work, you're already doing it partly out of necessity. But even if there are many things that need fixing, you can still see this job as a blessing. It could be a means to take you from one place to another for a while, even if nothing else happens. You can go for an ordinary evening stroll, treat yourself to a tea, coffee, or meal. Without constantly fixating on that thing you desire, you can redirect your brain cells to different things and control that energy in a healthy way. Forget about that thing, leave it behind, leave it in the past, and don't keep returning to the past. Give yourself fully to the present moment. Let go of desires and let life flow. When you think about the past and bring it into your present, you also bring the negative energy of the past into your present moment. 
That's why you keep summoning the same problematic energy into your life over and over again. Why would a person do that knowingly? Live each moment fully aware of that moment. Number five, desire to see how you can enjoy each moment. Focus on the present moment. In reality, you don't need to keep living in the past or constantly imagining the future. Live in the moment because this is truly the only important time you have in your hands right now. Because right now, this moment is what will create both your past and your future. The present moment is what shapes both your past and your future. Thank you for watching. If you feel that it has made even the slightest contribution, if it has brought a smile to your face or lifted your spirits even a bit, don't forget to like the video below. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications from the bell icon to be notified of new videos instantly. You can share your thoughts with us in the comments section, and if you wish, you can share your own story. I feel very fortunate to have met you, to have touched your lives, and to have illuminated my path with what I have received from you. That's all for today. Until the next video, take very good care of yourselves. I'm so glad you're here.